So we're gonna talk today about bypass diodes um, and what they're used for, what happens with some of the failure scenarios. So I've got two panels here. I've got one here that's all set up that has good bypass diodes in it. And I've got this one here that has no bypass diodes in it. So let me show you what the deal is with that, why it would have no bypass diodes in it. These diodes were hit by a lightning strike. So I went ahead and just tore off the legs. Basically you have the wire coming in here and then you've got a metal tab here, here, here. So you got four metal tabs here, right? And then you've got connections to the solar panels um, here, 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 and here up to the front of the solar panel. Ugh. So what you end up with is a connection here. That would be your very left connection that would be the same as what's coming in on the MC4, right? And then it runs down the panel, back up, and then it connects to that next tab. You can see right here where it runs under this piece of tape or whatever under here, right? And that is coming in right here. And all that is is a metal tab that's connected from here to here with a diode and from here to here with a diode. And what that allows it to do is if anything on this first uh, one third of the panel is shaded, then this biode can just, this diode can just bypass the current instead of running through that shaded portion. And that enables you to uh, get more of the energy out of the sun because otherwise those cells are actually absorbing energy from the other two thirds of the panel instead of giving you additional energy. So the bypass diode allows you to get a little more out of the panel. Um, with a lightning strike, apparently it shorts out the diodes. So all these diodes were shorted. So essentially you had energy coming in here and it's like, oh, I'll just go across the diode, cross the diode, cross the diode and then back out here. So you get zero volts. What you can do is just go break out the diodes, uh, all three diodes, and then what you have is the energy has to go through the solar cells in order to get out the other side. So now you don't have bypass diodes like this panel here. And if you shade any one cell, and we'll see what that does, you're gonna lose more energy than with a good panel. So that's the deal with this panel with no bypass diodes. I haven't put them back in yet. So let's set this up so that we've got two panels ready to go. So we've got our midday sun and we've got our two panels set up pointing the same direction, which is south. All right, so here we are in full sun. And our good diode panel is hitting about 300 watts. So let's plug in our no diode panel and just make sure that in perfect scenarios, it's also generating about 300 watts. All right, so our no diode panel is now connected. This one's a 320 watt panel. The one with diodes is 325 watts. So I expect a very small discrepancy in wattage. A little more than I expected. We're getting five or 10 less watts. But that's close enough. All right, so now we need to test shading on an individual panel. So with no diode, let's show what happens. If we're sitting up at 294 watts, 295 watts, we grab our handy shading tool here. So we're essentially shading one cell on a single row. So this here is supposed to be on one bypass diode, this is on another, and the third set is on a third diode. So once we've shaded this, we've shaded one cell, we've essentially shaded one cell that's in series for the whole panel. And what we're getting is about eight watts. And this MPPT should bring down the voltage here in just a minute and get us a little more than eight watts. Let's see what it does. Sometimes it's a little slow. There we go. So now it's dropped the voltage and our watts are coming up. So now you'll notice that the voltage is about two thirds of what it should be because it's only getting two thirds of the panel or less. What are we down to? We're down about half now. Of course, this is with no diodes, right? All right, so MPPT has figured out that it can get about 120 watts out of this panel, even without bypass diodes. So we got up to about 120 watts with shading one cell. So now let's go over to one with good diodes and show what happens there. All right, so now our panel with good diodes is in the shade because we've got some cloud cover coming over. But even in the shade, it's getting 60 watts. So once the sun comes out, it should get up to about 140. All right, so now with the full sun, 160, 175, 180 watts. 
So you'll notice that the voltage here has come down to about two thirds of the full panel voltage. And that's because it's bypassing one third of the panel. But we're still getting that two thirds as opposed to losing another half. So without bypass diodes, we get down to about a third. With the bypass diode, we stay at about two thirds. So that is the result of having bypass diodes.